My neighbor's been mowing his lawn this early in the morning. <sighs> Welcome back. Thanks for watching. Um, I appreciate it. Um, so I've decided that since it doesn't look like uh, this pandemic is going to end anytime soon, I'm going to give you my opinions on every single Frank Zappa album. Um, I've already done my top 10, so now I'm going to go from 11 all the way up. Uh, so as we go from uh, the great to the uh, not so great. Um, and the reason I'm really doing this is because almost every album, once you get to like even the high 50s, almost every album has something on it that's definitely worth checking out. Um, and so I want to uh, hopefully get people to check that out and support Frank because we all got more time on our hands. So number 11, one size fits all. I did an online poll back in the late 90s, back when uh, my uh, the internet did not have pictures, or at least I, as a user, was not able to put pictures on my site. Um, I did it on like a, a bulletin board, some international Frank Zappa form or bulletin board, I don't even know what we called it back then. Um, and we did a 64 song bracket, you know, where they competed, um, took months to do, we voted to determine the seating. We did that with the albums too, including like the Beat the Boots and um, in order to flesh it out to 64. Um, and in that competition, uh, One Size Fits All was voted for the best album and Eco Roads was voted as the best song. Um, I kind of almost agree with both of those. Obviously I put it as number 11, so I have one issue, but One Size Fits All is an amazing album released in 1975. This is Frank's sort of like progier album. Like if you wanna go that direction, I think you could qualify some of these songs as sort of a prog rock leaning album. It featured uh, one of his best bands. The core of this album was one of his best bands, which was the uh, a lot of members from 73 and 74, George Duke, um, Tom Fowler, Chester Thompson, Ruth Underwood huh, on percussion, William Murphy Brock on sax and vocals, um, just an amazing album. It starts off with Inca Rhodes, which is one of his easily greatest achievements. Um, this is a song that's like almost nine minutes long. It's got some amazing composed instrumental parts. It's got an one of Frank's best guitar solos. It's got a great George Duke solo. It's just a phenomenal song. Um, as you continue through the album, you have two versions of Sofa. You have the in instrumental version, plus you've got the one that has the, the lyrics, the German uh, lyrics on it. Um, you have Florentine Pogan, another phenomenal song, one of my all-time favorite songs. Um, this is just, I don't even know how to describe what Florentine Pogan is, but it is just uh, one of Frank's greatest achievements. Um, you have Andy, which is on here, another fantastic song. Just has these like, swells of like grandiosity, grandiosity, grandiose swells, plus these really funky sort of rhythm. Um, you have San Bernardino, which is his great little boogie number. Um, if you're a Mo fan, I think Mo covers San Bernardino. Um, amazing songs. Um, it's got Evelyn, a modified dog, which is like a little sort of, you know, kind of a little piano tomfoolery distraction, but maybe gives a clue to the poodle lecture that would come years later. Uh, because poodles were modified, if you know that story, um, and it has pajama people, uh, which is kind of a kind of a groovy little funky little number. Didn't get much live play ever, but uh, it's got a really good guitar solo, um, kind of some silly lyrics, but uh, a good song. If it were not for one song, this album would easily be one of my favorite top five easily. However. The second song on this album, Can't Afford No Shoes, I just don't like. I personally think that's one of Frank's worst songs. It's sort of like a canned heat boogie type thing. Um, the vocals are all kind of, weird vocals don't bother me, but in this case, they're just kind of annoying. Um, the solo's short, but it's pretty good. It's just not a very interesting song. And the album starts off so strong. The Inca Roads opener is probably one of the greatest openers ever. I mean, that and Peaches, you just can't beat that. And yet, you get this absolutely fantastic opener that just like, it's impressive for a guitar solo. The vocals are impressive. The compositional, the, the, the compositional parts are there are just impressive. There's a section between the guitar solo and the keyboard solo that is just phenomenal. Like the Ruth, uh, Chester, Fowler, I mean, Tom, I mean, all of them just playing these parts, amazing. 
And then that follows up with Can't Afford No Shoes, which is just not a very good song. Like, it never made it into Frank's live repertoire. It's just not ever gonna be on a greatest hits collection. And it just ruins what is an amazing vibe after Inca Rhodes, for me that is. Um, and so I think if this song had maybe been somewhere else on the album or not on the album at all, um, it would just be a much better album. But I don't like that song. But the rest of the material is so incredibly good that this is able to come in at number 11. So um, yeah, an amazing album. Just, you know, skip, well, listen to Can't Afford No Shoes, tell me what you think about it, whether it's as bad as I think it is or I'm just overreacting, but yeah. That's my opinion on that album. Check it out. It is, it is a phenomenal album, um, you know, and I think it's got f easily four of Frank's best songs ever. Inca Rhodes, Four and Two Pogue, and Andy in Sofa Number One. San Bernardino is no slouch, and those German lyrics on Sofa Number Two are just fun. It's a great way to end the album. So yeah, check it out. One Size Fits All, Number 11.